What a delight to be here with you today. This is Pastor Gabriel Swaggart, and uh, we're going to continue on our, on our teaching here today. Uh, we began just a couple of programs ago, uh, on the last program, I should say, the cure, for God, the, the, the cure for anxiety, fear, and worry. Really, I should put it this way, it's God's cure for all anxiety, fear, and worry. As we were kind of laying the groundwork for this particular series, I want to just say this before I read our text here today, that all anxiety, fear, and worry is a form of unbelief. And I want to pick up and deal with that just a little bit more here today. We're going to read from the second epistle to Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, reading verse 7, just one verse here today. Paul would write to his son in the faith, and he would say this, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I want to look at this here for a moment, just for a little bit here today. Picking up where we left off uh, last program, where... We dealt with the subject of fear, anxiety, and worry, and how crippling uh, that it can be. How um, how one could live in a state of constant fear, anxiety, and worry about things that are going to happen. I want to look at, first of all, the mind. And I want us to talk about this for a second. I want you to understand that there are, there's an old saying that the mind is the gateway to the soul, really the eye is the gateway to the soul, but also is the, the, the mind is the gateway to the spirit and that the mind is the devil's playground. Have you ever, and I, I'll be the first to admit this, have you ever uh, kept yourself up all night long worrying about something that may or may not happen? You're creating all sorts of scenarios in your mind about things that may happen or it may not happen. You, you're creating all sorts of things to psych yourself out of doing something or, or, or going forward with something. You begin to look at all of the negatives and you keep yourself up night after night dwelling on things that may or may not be. That's why I say that the, the, the mind is the devil's playground, especially for the believer. When we begin to, and, and, and trust me, I, I, this is one thing that I have actually, I have struggled with a lot in my life is um, making up scenarios and worrying about scenarios that may or may not happen. I've have there are times I've stayed up night after night uh, on the brink of just total collapse, worrying about things that may or may not take place. What about this? What about this? What about this? What about that? What about the other? And scenarios that I have made up in my mind that I have spent all night, eight, nine hours worrying about the situation getting to the place where I am literally laying in bed, tossing and turning, and, and, and going over this situation and that situation and this situation and that situation. It, to be honest, it is like I said, it is the mind is the devil's playground. He wants you as a child of God to worry about things because when you worry about situations, when you keep yourself up at night worrying about Uh, situations in life. You're not putting it into the hands of the Lord. We're not taking that situation, whatever it may be, and putting it in the hands of God. Listen to me, and this is something that I had to learn by uh, the hard way and by experience. When you fail to trust the Lord, let me say it differently, and I'll go back to what I said. All worry, when you worry about something, it is not trusting the Lord. And therefore, it's a sin. It's rooted in unbelief. All worry, fear, and and, and anxiety is rooted in unbelief. Saying, God, I don't know if you're able to do it. God, I don't know if you can do it. 
But the Bible tells us here, the Holy Spirit inspired these words written by the Apostle Paul, who said that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Now, it doesn't mean that a demon spirit literally comes inside of you and caught. No, no, no. It does mean, though, that a demon spirit can work against you in this. Now, let me say this, and then I'll move on. A Christian cannot be demon-possessed. A Christian can be oppressed, but cannot be demon-possessed. There is no evidence in Scripture of a believer ever being possessed by the devil. There are evidence of, in Scripture of believers being oppressed of the devil. Demon possession comes from within. Oppression comes from without. Oppression can definitely be demon-inspired. And that's what he seeks to do, to oppress us, to keep us down, but not possess us. That's an unbeliever. An unbeliever can be uh, possessed and oppressed, whereas a believer can only be oppressed and not possessed. The reason why is because you've changed masters. You don't belong to Satan anymore. God possesses you. So Satan and God cannot coexist in the life of a believer. You're either one or the other. If you're saved, Satan cannot possess you. He can oppress you, though. And this is where all of this, this is where it all stems from. All of this goes back to a sign of unbelief. God, I don't know if you can. But listen, I want you to listen to this. He said, God has not given us a spirit of fear. This is not referring to the Holy Spirit, of course, but it can refer to a demon spirit oppressing someone else, a believer, causing oppression and fear to come about. But it, it, listen to this. I, want to, I wrote this down because I want you to listen to this. Many times, the first negative step that we take is for us to look at the circumstances the problems, the situations, the scenarios, and allow our minds to become in, uh, seized by uh, the helplessness, the, 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 the hopelessness, which results in fear. Now, did you get that? The very first step in a negative way that we take is we begin to look at the circumstances. We look at everything that's around us. We look at the situation around us. We look at things that are happening in the world. We, we look at things that are happening in the nation. We look at things that are happening in, happening in our lives and we focus on those problems. And when we focus on the problems, hopelessness comes. Helplessness comes. Fear is a result because we don't see how things can go right. But the Holy Spirit says, I've not given you a spirit of fear. It means that regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the problems that are mounting against you, regardless of the, 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 the red seas that are in front of you and everything that's happening all around us, we don't look to the mountain. We don't look to the Red Sea. We don't look to the problem. We look to the one who can push down that mountain. We look to the one who can open up the Red Seas. We look to the one who can move away the problems. We look to the problem solver. And by us saying, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I do know that you're able to do it. Fear cannot reside with faith. They cannot coexist. In fact, they're the complete opposite. You have faith on one hand and fear on the other. Perfect love casts out fear. 1 John 4 and uh, 7 or 8, I believe, or something like that. 18, maybe, something like that. But perfect love, it's all centered in, uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll get to that on the next program. But he's, de he's telling us faith and fear cannot coexist. You have to look at your problem, and you have to look it square in the eye and say, problem, it's not meant for me to solve it. My God has supplied all of my needs according to His riches that are found in glory. My God is able to move that mountain. My God, my, the, my Bible, this Word of God, the Word of God that cannot fail, tells me if thou canst believe that all things are possible to him that believe. So as a child of God, regardless of the situation, 
tell the devil, devil, God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And we're going to look at those three segments, power, love, and a sound mind, and really what they mean on the next programs. However, the next program that I want to deal with is an understanding of the cross and how that it plays, the part that it plays in us having a spirit of fear or rather of a power of love and of a sound mind. If we understand the cross properly regarding sanctification, there will no be spirit of fear. But if we don't, there will be. And we'll look at that next time. So I pray that you're telling others about this. Why don't you share these videos with others? Subscribe to it. Don't forget to subscribe to this program and to this YouTube channel. And I want as many people as possible to hear these because the Christian community needs to hear, regardless of what's happening politically around the world, or, or and of course in this nation, regardless of what's taking place and our religious freedoms may be uh, being taken from us, we have to understand God has everything under control. That He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So I want you to share this with others. I want you to encourage others. And if you know of someone that is kind of going through some, uh, something and they're struggling, send them these videos and tell them to subscribe and tell them to listen because I believe that victory is going to be theirs. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next time in the Lord.